before I can put any oil in the crankcase to test this pump, I need to make a couple of blanket plates for there. I don't know what the resin ones were like. I think I've got some brass plate, I'm just going to make them out of that. The first thing I want to do is make a, a paper template or a cardboard template or even a gasket or a joint. We a joint because it's a steam engine. Make sure that there's a reasonable fit in there. Much better. It's not its worse. We'll pick up these two hole centers first. It's too narrow that bit, John. Right, so we've got those two hole centers. I've got just the right amount of muck on my hands to draw around. You sort of muck where you would <laughs> eat a sandwich, but you wouldn't use one of the wife's tea towels. Right. You could tap these out, but it's leaving a pretty decent mark, so I'm just going to cut them out. Right, that's not too bad. A little bit more shape around the bottom, I think. Right, we'll go and transfer this onto a piece of piece of plate and then cut it out. And then hopefully we can Make a blank out of it. Once I get the rough shape, I can file it to size. I use the word file very loosely because it will be going to be done on a, a sanding disc. Right, we'll roughly draw around this. Right, so I cut that out through the line. What we've chosen is a Slitting blade. It'll be warm. This sanding disc is a great bit of kit. I bought it initially for making patterns for casting, but it's, uh, it's very, very good. From 
problem is that bit of brass is going to get very warm very quickly. If there was more than two inches to do, I would probably do a drone. In cut them out on the plasma table, but two of them, it's just not worth it. Take the basic shape there. Right, so that's basically quite a nice fit in there. A little bit of tidy up with a file and some polish and that's going to be done. I'm going to transfer the two holes off the gasket, drill them and then I've got a, a cutting plan for holding them on. I'm just going to drill these by hand. Brass has a tendency to snatch when you drill it. Um, the way to do it properly is to back down the drill, put flaps on the lean edge of the drill so it doesn't bite in. What you can do, if I go with a small drill first Decent quality brass that Now if you went up, say 2 mil at a time, the drill would really snatch But if you go up to final size, which is 8.5 mil And you're nice and gentle, we should get away with it Nothing like that. At least that's the way I do it. And we're not making a precision item here, this is just a, a drain plate of a little steam engine. But I want it to look nice. And I'm sure it will. Quite splendidly. Idiot. When they were repaired, they were drilled out the 8mm. I'm going to screw an 8mm bolt in from the inside. A little bit of thread seal won't hurt it. A bit of a wrist break of that. I'm sure we'll be able to get a hand in somewhere. Right, screw that up through. Then this is going to be a permanent repair, there's no way it can pull out or come loose. Or... We possibly need a longer bolt, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we're a little bit short on threads there. Right, so I'll put a longer bolt in. Right, so I've got two 8mm bolts poking through there. What have I done with a brass plate? Brass plate is a good fit. Now that is an 8mm nut. 13mm spanner size. And it's ugly. It is an ugly fastening. That is a Whitworth nut, quarter Whitworth, which is really an attractive nut, it's bigger, it just, it's finished off better, it just looks better than that thing. It's a Victorian nut, modern nut. So what I'm going to do is leave those 8mm 
and convert these from quarter weight to eight mil. Then nobody will know that there aren't the original Whitworth or VSF nuts. Grip them in here. It's a pity those bolts were in black, but I didn't have any black bolts up then. Right, so they're going to screw on there quite nicely, and they do look the part. Look Even got a, a period of work with a spanner. Two gaskets to make for that, sorry, two joints to make for that. And we can proceed to put a little bit of oil in the crankcase and get the pump on. Right, and that's the difference between a Victorian nut. And a modern nut. I suppose I'm a bit of a Victorian nut. Anyway, that's that one done. And I did that one earlier. This is the oil pump drive off the engine. What I want to do is drill and tap this end just so I can put a, a bolt in so I can run the oil pump with a drill just to make sure it really functions before I put too much of the engine together. I put a six mil thread at the end of there. It's already got a centre mark in it. M5 is the tapping drill for six mil. This has a chance to be hard. If it's too hard, I won't we'll be able to do it. That is absolutely as hard as the hogs are hell. I'll try a different drill. I'll try a cool board drill. Right, nothing's going to be happening with that, I'm afraid. That's a bit of real hard and tough and steel. I've built the oil pump housing onto the crankcase using the new joint we made. I'm going to do a dummy assembly on this and try and get the oil pump to work. The first thing I'm going to put in is the oil pump drive gear. That's it there. That's cleaned up quite nicely. There is a little bit of pitting on there on the camera. I'm not that worried about it. We've got this cross shaft that also goes with it. Put a little bit of lubricating oil into the bushes there's a key on there that drives 
Click here. This all fits together quite nicely because I've spent quite a lot of time polishing it and cleaning things up. There's oil holes that feed all these various bushes that are all nicely cleaned out. This is the actual pump element or the pump and plunger. Once again there's a little bit of pitting on there but nothing to, to worry about. It's got a bronze liner for the pump. So that simply goes in there. That turns round and that's what pushes the pump up and down quite merrily. I've got all the parts of the old pump washed off, ready to assemble. I'll turn the engine over onto its top and we can concentrate on how this works. Right, so once again we've got the plunger, it's got a flat machine on it and it's got a little oil hole there just to keep things lubricated. A bit of oil on there. Okay, so that goes into there. I managed to save the gasket, we can use the original gasket. All the parts that go into this, there was a big bronze spring, that's the return spring for it. it pushes it up and down, or at least that returns it. This is the actual valve body with its various drillings. There's some soft solar there, and if you look closely, there's a drilling through all those ports, so they've drilled that, then they've used the solar to close the end of the port up. Right, there was balls and springs in here when I took it apart, if I remember correctly. There was that one in there. Then there was a spring in there. And there was a ball. In there. I've had a look at the video and this is definitely the way it goes together. Right, so we can put the gasket back on. We can utilise that gasket, that will not be a, a problem at all. That one went into there. So that should bust it. It should bust that should have jumped. Right, what I'll do, I'll glue that little spring into there with a bit of grease to stop it from doing that. Right. Better. I bought a little set of work with sockets off eBay. I think they were less than ten pound. Delivered yet you can it it's incredible. Nice little socket set. Because all the Whitworth gear that are, are hard socket wise, I give them to a lot who was restoring old classic cars and never thinking I would ever need them again. Right, so that goes on to there. There's a little hole in there, that's for a bleed screw. So 
put it over the pile in there and screw with the bleed screw in. Fire my washer. When I took this engine apart, there was a ball and a spring in there. Uh, it's actually a pressure relief valve. The feed comes off here and goes to a drip oiler, which actually drips oil onto the gears. There's an inlet and an outlet both inside the crankcase, and all it does is feed oil into the flywheel end main bearing, and the crank's cross drilled into the big end. This one here is just sort of splash lubed from what I can work out. So I want to make sure we've got plenty of oil in all these little ports and passages. You actually know, see the oil dripping out of there. That is coming out of the port where the pressure relief valve would go. Now the spring for the relief valve is absolutely non-existent. The ball's still alright. So the ball went in there and there's a seat up there somewhere for it. Yeah. So that's on its seat there. Okay, so we need a spring to go in there, quite a light spring, I've got a box of springs, I'm sure I'll find something just to put a little bit of load. I could probably put a pressure gauge on this and see what sort of oil pressure it is producing. I don't think it'll be a great lot. There's a spring there that looks like it might do the job. On a temporary sort of gear, so there's a better one. I think that's a little bit on the strong side. I don't think it'll need that much spring pressure at all. I'll shorten. Bastard thing. I'll shorten this one down a little bit. Let's so I can find something more suitable in here. Just a box of springs I've collected over the, over the years from various bits and pieces. I like springs. That's a nice light one. Now I think I'm going to go for this one. I'll cut a few coils of it and Try it in. Right, that's definitely going to put a little bit of lure on it.
Right. So there is a banjo fitting that goes onto there. It feeds on up to the top of the engine. So both this and the oil feed inside the crankcase are under pressure caused by that screw. Right. Right inside here, you can see there's two ports. That one there with the strainer on, that's the oil into the pump, and that's the oil feed out of the pump that feeds the back main. I think I'll blank that one off and concentrate on the banjo fitting at the front that feeds oil up to the up to the gears, otherwise I'm gonna have oil pissing everywhere. We'll probably have oil out everywhere anyway, but we'll try and keep it at one minimum. Right, so this is the oil feed that goes up and feeds the drip oiler that lubricates that gear. We'll just tighten that in. Ah. Well, I'm going to stop with the fit that. Go from five sixteen foot worth to three eight. This will fit it. Right, we'll make do with these for the minute and I'll just put up with all the comments and nasty remarks about adjustable spanners. Okay. Right, so now we've got the blank off that one hole in there and then get some oil into it. Pump some oil into that hole. Right. Right, I'll scroll the original pipe inside the crank just so it doesn't spray oil everywhere. Put some engine oil in here, I'm not sure what I've got. I'm not sure what it should run on. Five thirty will do the job. It's not ideal, but it will do the job. It's a little bit watery for this. Just want to make sure that the I'll pick up pipe's covered, which it is. So well, since this is having all this, see the idea was to drive that with a drill, but I can't drive it with a drill. We'll have to do it by hand. Take that bleed screw out of there. Well, imagine the pump will go in that direction. I don't think it'll make a great lot of difference. Take the bleed screw out. So it's been a long entrance this pump oil. We'll have to make an adapter to drive this with the drill, it's just not getting enough, enough speed up with it. Right, 
Right. Not really great lot happening there, is it? Some real thick stuff here, some central engine oil. Ah, we get an action there now. Something's happening. I knew this would turn messy. Yeah, I can feel feels like something's starting to happen. It's hard out of turn. I definitely need something to turn this with, not uh, not by hand. And we should get some action. Right, I've cobbled the drive up and that's moving quite a lot of oil. Very happy. So the pump works in both directions. Right, so I'm happy because I've got a proper mess, but I'm happy because it's it's pumping oil. I didn't want to build the engine and then start it and think I wouldn't have us got any oil going around. You can't tell by the side glass it goes on here. But let me put that on there because that's one of the bits that Bob stripped and rebuilt for us. And an absolute splendid job he's made of it. In fact it's stunning. Right, so we we'll to put this tube into here and get some water. Water, it's not water, I'm on you idiot. Everything wants washers on and it wants nipping up. But I'm sure you get the, the idea of it. So I'll blank off the other one. The oil should come up here and drip onto that gear which it is oh this is this is just this is just superb right you can actually see the oil going through the little lubricator I'll get the camera so you can see it because it's worth looking at Tomorrow morning's job's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a degrease. I get the camera and you have a look in here and you can see the oil dripping through quite merrily. Yeah, you can see it dripping there. In fact, it's doing more than dripping. You can see the oil dripping there, so it's going down and feeding that gear like it's supposed to. This is absolutely superb stuff, this. Far cry from one. I received the engine. Right, so we know that the oil pump functions, everything works as it should. Right, that hole there is a pressure release valve. So if I blank with that pipe off, we should see oil coming out of there. To me, there's a little bit extra, too much load on there. I could possibly need a light that spring, but without putting the gauge on. But seeing that it's never going to be in a situation like that, it's going to be running.
a little bit blown past there. Anyway, that could be a little bit of crap stuck on one of the balls, but it, um, I'm pleased it's working. Oh, it's pissing everywhere now. Right, let the oil black out a bit. Put a proper mess. A proper mess now. 